Good morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for not keeping us in the dark concerning you, first of all, and the truth who you are and your word. And everything you said would happen is happening. We're living it. I just read a news account where that's part of what's happening. Your life is trying to be perverted by the enemy, by Satan and all his minions, to create artificial life, artificial intelligence. But they can never create his life itself. But they can never really copy his true intelligence, true wisdom, true emotions for that matter. It's all a fake, just like fake Jews and fake Christians and, and fake you know, politicians who say they work for an hour behalf, but they don't. We have fake life itself, fake humanoids. I mean, how, how crazy, Lord, and how fast it's approaching, it seems to us. Forgive us our sins, Lord. Be with all those who love you. Give us insight into your word today. And protect us, Lord. Protect us from ourselves, especially. Because our flesh is so quickly agitated and, and acted upon. And yet we're to trust you. Help us do that more and more, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, prophecy, but the Bible is really the only so-called holy book, the only holy book, but uh, from all the other so-called holy books, nobody has prophecy. Are you aware of that? Nobody. And the ones that dabble in a little bit of it, uh, you know, uh, of course, are all wrong, and none, none of it's ever come to pass. And the stuff that is more or less acceptable, they've stolen from the Bible. So God's Word is the one that we have to go to to get the bottom line on all these, these things. So we covered... Chapter 1 and 2, the last couple of weeks of the book of Philippians, Paul wrote to the church of Philippi and, uh, you know, admonishing them and uh, like he did with all the churches that he started. So we're in chapter 3, and we begin, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. If I preach the same thing to you over and over again about, you know, the, some of the things that the world's way of loving and that we got to have intelligent love and all this kind of stuff, and I mention it a lot because it's good for you to hear it a lot because you hear so much trash a lot. You know, if we hear 90% trash and 10% good, which is going to outweigh the other? I mean, it's obvious. Uh, repetition is the mother of skill, as we say, when we train in close quarter combat, and it's the same thing with this. The more you hear of trash, the more trash you're going to accept and eventually act out. And, and that's just how it is. And we all got to watch it. Verse 2, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. The mutilation here refers to circumcision that has no point. These guys that were saying, well, we got circumcised because we're Jewish, etc., etc. This is who he calls dogs. They're Judaizers. We call them fake Jews today. Those who don't not only not know Christ, but don't want Christ. There are many Jews who don't know Christ, but they're still looking for the real God. They're not the same people. Please understand, those who hate Christ literally with a passion, the Talmudic Judaism, these are the fake Jews. They will never come to God because most of them have already seared their conscience. And remember, you cannot unsear a conscience once it's seared. Try unsearing a steak once you've put it on the grill. You can't do it. It's over. So never ever sear your conscience. Conscience, of course, meaning with knowledge, the knowledge you have of God and the truth that's in you. Do not sear that. And he says in verse 3, For we, we believers, are the circumcision. We're the real circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. It's a spiritual circumcision because we, we, we circumcise our hearts. We cut off all the flesh. We cut off all the trash. We cut off everything not needed to be as pure as possible once we make the decision for Christ. Hallelujah. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And then he lists what he, who he is. He, he says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. I am an Israelite, Paul says. What are you guys talking about? You fake Jews, what are you talking about? You think you got something on me? I am an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. I know exactly where I come from, he says. A Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a teacher. He was well-versed in the Scriptures. He was one of the top... A Pharisee. Concerning the law, I was a Pharisee. In other words, I believed in the resurrection. I didn't know about Christ, but I believed in the resurrection as opposed to 
the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection, they also didn't believe in angels. So there's a distinction between fake Jews, you understand? Okay. So he was a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church or this new religion. They used to call it the way. In his day it was called the way. And he was just, he was he just was convinced Christ was a liar. He was convinced Christ was from the devil, and he chased him down. He was going to close down every church and persecute every Christian he could. Remember that most Christians in those days, for the for the majority, were Jews. That lasted for the first first one to two hundred cent- years, a couple of first centuries. The majority of the church was Jewish, not uh, Gentile. It became Gentile about the third century. That's when Roman Catholicism cranked up and became organized and of course they right away married the world and all the paganism that's why we have christmas and easter today and all the other nonsense it's not biblical so he says i can have confidence more than you all look at who i am and he listed in five and five and six verse seven but what things were gained to me these i have counted lost for christ all i once had dear all I once held dear, built my life upon. This is what this scripture is. What this song is based on their lyrics. All I once sought gain, I have counted loss, spent and worthless now compared to this. This what? This knowing Christ, knowing you, Jesus. He goes on. Now my heart's desire is to know you more. We'll find that in a little bit. Yes, and go back to eight. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He lost his position. He gave it up, in other words. He lost his position with a, with, as a Pharisee. He didn't need it anymore. He said he knew it was trash. And he counted them rubbish. Some versions say dung. That's what it's worth now. There's this religious thing I had is total dung that I may gain Christ. Now my heart's desire is to know you more, to be found in you and known as yours, right? To possess by faith what I could not earn, also passing gift of righteousness. It's a gift. Being right with God is a gift because Christ was right with God. You and I are never going to be right with God except in how we're tied in with Christ. If we believe Him and He's our Lord and Savior, then His righteousness belongs to us. We get it. It's a gift that comes along with salvation. Hallelujah. If we don't, we don't have it. And these fake Jews don't have it. And the fake Christians don't have it. And the fake anybody doesn't have it. Because why? They're fake. This robot or anybody else, they're going to have armies of robots are surrounding us, especially you youngins. I may kick the bucket any time. I don't know. Almost did already. But you guys are going to walk around robots. Jill and I, when we traveled a lot, went to Europe, a couple times a year and elsewhere we were going a lot flying a lot years ago especially in the 90s and we would always say I wonder how many spies and murderers and and druggists and you know uh, uh, what do you call it uh, when you bring things somewhere illegally Uh, smugglers yeah how many smugglers we've run into here at the airports and train stations I bet you quite a few because we live in an evil world we just didn't know it well, just think, you're going to have this. Somebody driving a car, a, a driverless car, like these electric cars. They're, they're, they released them in, uh, in Berlin and in Munich. They released them in, I think, L.A. and a couple of other places. All over Europe, they're releasing driverless cars. So when you get an accident, who are you going to, who are you going to flip off, you know? Who are you going to get mad at? Not that you should do these things, you understand, but I'm saying there's nothing. You can't deal with it. So you bump around a corner and a, and a robot bumps into you and says, oh, I'm sorry. And you, but you're so mad because you got your own thing going on. You start a fight with a physical fight with a robot. How far is that going to go? You understand, these are the things we're facing. And not only that, the robot you're fighting is legal. It's going to take you to court. A machine, a non-living dead thing will take you to court and get representation. This is what we're talking about. Man, we're in the last days. I can't wait for it to completely be over with. Maybe that's why God kept me alive, to experience the rapture. I've been praying for that. I want to experience it while I'm living. I'm going to, Either way, I'll get rapture, but I want to experience what I'm living. Beware of dogs. 
So eight, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I suffered loss. Everything's trash. Nine, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. In other words, I don't have to do it. I don't have to follow it, do this, do, don't do that thing to get right. It's a free gift. However, once I have the free gift, I have to do the law. You understand? There's a law of Christ to do things right. If we don't do them right, then... All we're doing is yapping. You have to prove your faith by doing. Does everybody know the difference? You cannot do to get faith. You've got to have faith first. And then once you have faith, then you do what's right. James says, faith without works is dead. And he says, well, I can show you my faith. You can show me your works. He says, no, no, show me your faith by your works if you can. But you can't because you don't have any works. If you don't do good things, you can't possibly have faith because you're not showing it. You can't possibly prove it. And be found in Him, oh, to know the power of your risen life. And to know you in your suffering. To become like you in your death, my Lord. So with you to live and never die. That's what we just sang. That's verses 8, 9, 10 here. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. To become like you in your death, my Lord. Because he didn't stay dead. I don't want to stay dead. Do you? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Verse 11. And here's a scripture that totally flies in the face of those knuckleheads that uh, believe that they can attain perfection before the rapture. Verse 12, not that I have already attained or am already perfected. This was Paul. If anyone was ever a Christian, Paul was. Look what he suffered. Three or four shipwrecks, you know, beat with a whip 39 times, three or four times. Stoned, left for dead because they stoned him and they thought he was going to die. But he lived through it. That's when he actually went to heaven. Paul visited heaven, but all these books are coming out. All these little girls, little boy visited heaven. It's a bunch of nonsense, trash from of the devil. Nobody's going to heaven, Jesus said, up until that time. People have had visions like Ezekiel. He had visions of heaven, visions of the throne. And by the way, the very first song we sang, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, those of you that were in the uh, angel class, you now know when you sing cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which word and art and forever shall be. What are they? They're angels, cherubim angels. The angels that sat around God's throne to guard at seraphim were called burning ones. They're also a high class of angel. Angels have different classes. We talked about that. So some of these things in the songs that you may not recognize, but we picked the songs because they are scriptural and they have scripture in them. That's why we sing them. Otherwise, there's no need to sing. You can't possibly sing praises to God without singing scripture. As some have said, there's no uh, doxology without theology. There's no singing songs to praise God without utilizing His Word. That's why a lot of the new, newer songs have come out in the last 20, even 30 years, are Mimi songs. You know, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you know, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord. And that's great, but there's no scripture in that. And then they go right back out and live life like they did before. They feel good for a moment while they're in church, you see. We don't want to do those songs. We were part of some of that, and we, you know, we didn't know any better, but then we learned. So now we're going to sing songs with substance, actual physical substance of the word of the living God. Hallelujah. And God is up there enjoying it, loving it. That's a sweet sacrifice. Our life down here sucks. Let's let, pretend it doesn't. Even if we have a good time, it sucks compared to what we're, what's coming anyway. But throughout that, God says, hey, praise me because I've got something better for you. And look, what I've said is coming to pass. Can't you see it? I'm saying, yeah. Pretty obvious, isn't it? You know, as time proceeds, it's going to get more obvious. And it's probably more obvious to me than it is to most of you because I'm into the Word every day and thank God for that. Not all of you can do that because you work jobs, you, you know, all this kind of stuff. I get that. That's why I'm up here as pastor, I guess. But being a Word to some extent, no... Spend time with your Lord and Savior. If you don't read His Word, you can't be spending time with Him. 
And if that's the case, you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker if you ever had any faith to begin with. So get that faith and stay there and fortify that faith. It's not that you get more, but that it gets uh, more quality. God is about quality, not quantity. So not that I've already attained. I've said this to, to this friend of mine who's into this nonsense. I said, how can you even say that? Paul himself wasn't perfect. He said it right there. And he had some excuse. You see, once you get off and you, and, and, and you really let that get to you, you're going to make excuses. Everybody. We're all doing it. We're going to make excuses. Because we don't want to be wrong, you know, especially about this sort of thing. But we have to be very careful. Because no matter what anybody believes, there is a heaven and there is a hell. I didn't make this up. I can't change it. Don't want to. I just know that my choice is to go make it to heaven. I want life everlasting. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. There he basically repeats it. I haven't, I haven't been there yet. But one thing I do, and hear this everybody. Please hear this. One thing I do. I do not count myself to have, da, 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 da. yeah, I do not have uh, apprehend, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Live your life and let that crap be behind you. Let the past be past at last, as some have said. Because you can't change it. You can only change what happens the next moment and tomorrow and next week and next month, etc. I had to learn to do that in many areas of my life, and so do you. Sooner or later, I mentioned last time that we all take trash from somebody. We want to feel like we don't, because if, if we do, we feel like we're not tough. It's got nothing to do with tough. Tough is staying the course. Tough is obedience. Anybody can disobey. It's nothing. Anybody can disobey. Tough is obedience. And obedience happens to be the exact same thing as loving God. Go with me to John, please. John chapter 14. Just real quick, we'll cover that. I want to make sure. Bring that out. John chapter 14. Make no mistake about it. I'm building a PowerPoint on some of these false teachings that are in the church. Like God loves everybody regardless and all this kind of stuff. And well, grace covers everything. And, and these things are common in the church, in what's called the church, but they're not true. The Bible doesn't teach them. 15, verse 15. I mean, 14, John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Doesn't need to be explained any further. I don't think so. Go down to 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And you who loves me will be loved by my Father, etc. Any explanation needed further? Go to 23. Jesus said, answered and said to him, Jesus, Jesus, by the way, is speaking in all these. If anyone loves me, he will do what? Keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make a home with him. I told you before that in 21 and 23, in the Greek, it means my Father will love him and only him. Wow. Look at 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So it, bottom line is it comes from the one who is, who is, uh, who is a creator. I mean, know that Christ created everything because he is the word. God spoke the word, etc. One more. Uh, he who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. And he talks about the Holy Spirit coming to aid when he leaves, goes back to heaven. Is it any more clear, or does it need to be any more clear, to love God means to obey God? Are we getting it? Will we do it is the question, isn't it? I fail myself. I don't stand up here like somebody who's perfect in any of this. I fail. The point is, if I were perfect, just like Paul wasn't perfect, I'm not perfect. If I were perfect, I wouldn't need Christ to have gone to the cross. You understand? I need him be precisely because I'm not perfect. And if I'm perfect one moment, the next moment I fly off the handle somehow. If only in my brain. 
Yeah. All right. So press forward to the goal. 13, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. In other words, to be saved, to make it to heaven, for this thing to be accomplished, for to get raptured, to be part of this, to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That does not mean that we did everything wonderful and there was no errors and no correction. It means that you made it because you, all the stuff came on you, the world came on you, the lies came on you, the fake science came on you, everybody, everything fake came on you. And you stood in faith for me anyway. And you got sickness and you got death and you got, you know, losses in family and you got other things that were hard on you, but yet you stayed. And you lost your job and you didn't know what to do. Your relationship went upside down, down the toilet, and yet you stayed in faith. Welcome into heaven, son and or daughter. See, that's what it's about. It's about the next life. It's not even about this life. This life is only given us so we make a choice for God. Ow! I love it! Man, when we get that, it frees me. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I'm free. I'm free to do whatever I want up here, except teach trash. I got to teach His Word. But I don't have to have a robe on, and I don't have to have a long face and go to speak Elizabethan English. You know, I don't have to do any of that. I just have to be real with this word right here. And as far as I'm concerned, I am. So don't think of the past. Don't linger in the past. Don't live in the past. Because all you're going to do is get mad. You're never going to get glad. Go forward. Forward with Christ. Forward in the things you know you got to do. Do the best you can. Pray. Leave the rest up to him that you can't handle. So he presses. Paul said, I have to press forward. In another place he said, you know, we apostles, including himself, of course, we're hungry, we're cold, we're beat up. We got danger of false brethren. We got danger of the Jews. We got danger of, of robbers. We got danger of everything. There's danger all around. Danger of wild animals. We got danger everywhere. Wow. But he went on anyhow. Because those, that's the way it is in this life. Thanks to Satan. Therefore, he says, verse 15, let us as many as are mature. Right there it is. Now, maturity doesn't have necessarily a line. You know, everyone up here is un immature and then these guys are mature. You can be down here and at that level you can be mature. You can be at this level and be mature. Some are at this level in the head and they're totally immature. They need to be down here somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? So be mature in whatever. It means be real. Treat it like it's the reality that it is. And God will raise you up. Remember, God raises you up. If I raise myself up, if I start telling you I'm a prophet of God and I'm an apostle like some of these guys do on TV, God can't lift me anymore. I've already lifted myself up too high. You understand? But if I humble myself, God will lift me up. Mm. And the final lifting up, the one I'm looking for, is not even on this earth. It's in heaven. So therefore, as many as are mature have this mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. God will give you the knowledge. <laughs> Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained... See, whatever degree we are, high, lower, in the middle, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. See, this is why we have, we're pretty much of the same mind here generally. We all got little individual, uh, you know, things that we may not agree on, even on scripture or, or other things in life. But we do agree on that this is the word of God. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Can't get saved without him. And that the world is a lie. The world surrounding us is a lie. See, that's that's a one-mindedness that we have in this little group. And we need to build on that and have our mind more and more on Christ, me included, obviously. Then he says in 17, or in 16, Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us all be of the same mind. Brethren, verse 17, join in following my example. He was confident enough that he was following Christ that he could say, follow my example. Folks, I can't say that. I cannot tell you or anyone else to follow my example. Are you kidding? 
I say follow Paul's example. Follow Jesus, certainly. But Paul was able to say that. And that guy was able to say it, and yet he said he hasn't attained it. So how can these knuckleheads teach, and there's a bunch of them, say we've already attained, we can be perfect in this world, because without you can't get saved, they teach, which is the salvation by works, which is totally false. That's why I want to bring it up in Bible study, because it's, it's so cleverly worded, and they have so many right things they say, and then they add a little bit, and most people can't see it. They, they skip right over that. That's why he says over here, beware of the false dogs, you know, beware of the dogs, the Judaizers, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation, et cetera, et cetera. Beware of all this. It's our job to be aware. It's our job to know what's going on around us. It's our job to know about this robotic thing I read you about earlier. We need to know these things. Not for the sake of knowledge alone, but to remind us what time it is. So, brethren, join, or join in following my example. Wow. And note those who so walk like I walk as you have us for a pattern. Wow, what, a, what, what kind of pattern did, did Kenny, Benny, and Joyce set? They set a name it and claim it pattern. That's not this. What kind of pattern does Benny Hinn set? A liar big time. He doesn't follow this. But people are following their pattern. How about Joel Osteen? He has five or six services, you know, packs the place out. 30,000 or more fit in there at one time. He's got over 100,000 people physically seeing him, plus all the TV stuff and everything. They're following that dude. They're not following this. He's a liar and a false teacher. He's got the biggest church in America, in the world, in fact. Wow. Follow Paul, guys. Follow Paul and these guys right here. Follow this word. Follow Jesus Christ, who is the word. Don't follow anybody else. Do not follow me. Follow this. Are you hearing me? Yes. For many walk of whom I have told you often. So he said he's already exposed these guys often. And now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. Which is, you know, the name and claim it. And whose glory is in their shame. Oh, I'm a pastor so-and-so. I'm, I'm an apostle and, oh, you know, I have all these thousands of people in church. Aren't I important, you see, that have a big name? That's who he's talking about. Whose glory is their, is their shame? Who set their mind on earthly things? Verse 20, for our citizenship, if you have a KJV, it'll say conversation. For our conversation is in heaven, but it means citizenship, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you eagerly waiting for Jesus? I am. I really am. To eagerly wait is to, uh, let me go there, right here, I got that definition. Uh, the word is ap apokaradokia. It means to look intently into the distance with outstretched head. Where is it? I'm expecting it. I love it. I want to have it. You know, you, you look at it. You're not just going, oh, Jesus will be here. I suppose in a couple hundred years, you know, another thousand. Let, we have people who, uh, family members who, who claim to be Christians, and we ask them about the rapture, about Jesus, oh, he's probably another 500 years, you know. Saying that is, is like showing that you don't really believe. You're not, you're not looking for him, much less with an outstretched neck. And yet that's what the Greek says, apokaradokia, literally to look intently into the distance with outstretched head. Wow. Look for Christ to come because he is coming. Paul looked for him already back then. The fact that he didn't come in his second coming back then doesn't matter. Paul didn't realize all that had to happen, even though he was preaching it and writing it. He's not God. All the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, they had no clue what they were writing. I mean, they understood, you know, they were following God and so forth, but they didn't know that the church would be born. They didn't know that God would take Jews and Gentiles, put them together, call it the church. They didn't know that. But they wrote about it. That's the mystery Paul talks about. Paul was given that. Peter, James, and John didn't understand that either. That's why God kept them over to the Jews. You, you teach your people the Jews. Paul I'm sending to the Gentiles. Because Paul was given the revelation that, hey, the Gentiles and the Jews will be together in one flock. One flock of sheep. Jesus already uh, announced it before he went to the cross and said, I have other sheep of which you know nothing about. i got to get them too. That's you and me. That's the Gentiles, the non-Jews. Ow! 
That's good news. Man, I'm telling you. No one's excluded in God's economy. That's why he died for all. And he says an important thing here as we go on. So have your citizenship in, in heaven. That's from, from whom, from which place we wait for the, for the Savior, meaning he's in heaven. Who will transform, verse 21, our lowly body so that it may be conformed to his glorious body. What's his glorious body? A resurrected body. Can never die again. According to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. In other words, he has all power. He holds all things together by the power of his word. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. What's that admonition? If you're once saved, always saved. You don't have to do this. Why would he say that? He says it elsewhere in many different ways. Stand fast. He says in 2 Timothy, I have kept the faith. Wow. He didn't say God kept it for me. The Holy Spirit helped me. He said, I kept the faith. Because faith keeping is your job for your faith and my job for my faith. And in as much as I'm a pastor, I'm helping you keep yours, hopefully. But you've got to get there first. Understand Jesus, who he is, and then keep it. Come hell or high water, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. And how would I know you kept it? By your deeds, by what you do. That's how I know. How do you know I keep it? By my deeds. Faith without works is dead. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, he longs for these people. He loves them. I love you guys. My joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Wow. I implore you, Doya. I implore Syntyk to be of the same mind in the Lord. They're both saved, but they had a fight in the church. Two women. And I urge you also, true companion or brother and sister in the Lord, help these women. Help them get their act together. Help them not fight one another. Who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Ow! This is why Jesus said, you know, if you, if you do right, I'm not going to erase your name, because it's already in there. When you get saved, your name gets put in there. Now there's an argument, well, the name's in there already. You know, I don't know about that. I just know that if you're saved, it's in there. You come to Christ, it's in there. But if you throw it away at some point, it gets erased. Because Jesus said in the book of Revelation, it can be erased. Why would that even, why would we even mention that if it can't be erased? You see what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Oh, once you're in there, you're in there. Nonsense. Remember, just quickly, I'm going to say it a million more times before it's all over because we're in the last days. We may have a robot walking in here. I mean, Really? You and I can buy a drone already. Everybody's selling drones. It's a robot. So let's help one another. We got a problem in this church. Let's talk about it in the church. Remember, Paul got into the one in 1 Corinthians. Why do you go to the world? Why do you go to the world to make judgment? Is there no one among you who can judge even the smallest matter? You run to the world right away. Got to go to court. Now, I understand the state being what it is in this day and age, and it's worse than what, what it was, although they were ate up with laws already in Rome and Greece and so on. Um, you know, and, and we're tied in with the whole taxes thing and all that, so we, we have to have, uh, uh, to live in this life as a citizen of whatever, we have to have a secular judge make a decision so it can be recorded. Okay, That's sad, but that is true. So we have to have some of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? But we shouldn't run every time we have a we have a problem. We were forced to go to the to give you an example. Jill and I, the rentals, when we had some more rentals, we rented to a girl who's oh just let me live here, let me live. I'll be a good tenant. Total trash to place, and uh, you know, uh, cost us like five or six grand to clean it up and fix it up. This happened more than once to us, and uh, you know, we didn't hold it against her. We wanted her to be accountable. This particular person. And when we went to the church leadership, they basically did nothing. What's up with that? That's not this. I know that. So we had to go to court. Still didn't get nothing. But we had to get a judgment, you know, because they broke the lease and so on. You see what I'm saying? So you have to do, the, do these things because when someone signs a lease in today's world, it's not within the church. It's out there. It's in the world. It's with a court system. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So we have to deal with them. 
but we got to do it wisely. But if we got any problems in here or anything like that, or especially personal problems, let's get it figured out with God in the middle of this thing, please. And as time gets worse, we need to do that more. And I know, and I, let me just add real quick, sometimes it feels like we're not getting anything done and you want something done. I pray every day and uh, I don't see answers right away, but I know they're on the way. I know God has heard me and I know they're coming. I do. I mean, what's my point in believing if that's not true? Paul says pray, pray all the time. Pray unceasingly. Ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking is what the Greek means. And ask, seek, and knock. It means continually do that. Same, same way with faith. And that's why faith and that go together. Continue in the faith, brethren. You know, we're going to have this and that. If you continue in the faith, Paul says. It's always an if. It's always a question. Will you, con- will you stay in the faith? The matter is faith. We're saved by grace through faith, not by grace alone. We're kept by God. That's Ephesians 2.8. We're kept by God, 1 Peter 1.5, through faith. Not by God just doesn't just keep us because we came once. We're kept through faith. And quickly, uh, in John, let me, let me look that up real quick. I uh, told you the Greek there before, but I want to do it again. Oh, John. In John, uh, yeah, in John six twenty nine, Jesus says, they said, uh, they, they asked him in 28, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Because they knew they had to do something. And Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. That's the Greek pisteos ete. And it means you should be believing with a strong sense of continuity. On the part of the believer. You can't get away from it. Faith is ongoing. Your yesterday's faith is dead. Tomorrow's faith ain't here yet. You better be leaving right now. And you better be believing when the next moment comes right now. And when tomorrow becomes now, you better be still believing. You understand? Don't throw your faith away. That's how you're saved in eternity. That's how your eternal security is secure. Because you keep believing. Everybody get that? There's so many false teachings on this, folks. To make it easy on you. You know, no. Just keep believing. Come to faith and stay there. Hallelujah. It's not that hard. The concept is not that hard. So help these women whose names in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Why can't you say rejoice? You know, I, I got sick. I had cancer. How can I rejoice? I really did rejoice in that hospital bed. I was in that stinking room 24 days, almost all month. Because the first operation went sour. You know this already. But I'm trying to tell you that I was rejoicing. And when a couple of people came in with a false teachings, I get away from me. Trash. I know where I'm going. This tells me where I'm going. Not you Roman Catholics or not you New Age people that come in. They had this lady come, oh, I'd like to pray for you. I said, whatever. And she did this thing, you know, and it was all about, you know, happy-go-lucky, blah, 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 stroke your, cut, count your toes or something. I don't know. It was stupid. I, I just let her go. There's no need to say anything. It was ridiculous. She, she knew, didn't know God from a hole in the ground, but she was going to pray for me. Are you kidding? There was no need to fight, though. You know what I mean? I just stood I knew she was leaving in a few minutes. So, so you know, you, you, you kind of pick, them, <laughs> you pick and choose your, your battles, I suppose, in that way, too. Verse 5, let your gentleness be known to all men. In other words, be kind. Don't be a wash rag, don't be a doormat, but be kind. Are you hearing me? You're not very kind. I need to hear everybody. Are you, are you hearing me? That's a little better. See, now you're kind. <laughs> I need the feedback. Don't you understand? <laughs> all right. The Lord is at hand, he says. Right here, we know that he thought the Lord was coming soon. To be at hand means he's right outside the door. You've all seen the movies, right? Look at me. Where the, you know, the back in the Baroque days and the, all the guys were wearing wigs and everything, you know, and they would have a guy with a big staff and the big party was going on on some sort of legal thing. The king's over here on his throne and the door's over here. And the, and the guy standing here with the staff would see who that is. He would know who this is. Uh, Prince so-and-so. And he would go bang, bang, bang. And he's telling the king and everybody else in court, Prince so-and-so is at hand. 
And he would walk in, get introduced, do his thing, and the next person, next person, or the next couple, whatever. What it means to be at hand is you're right outside the door. One more step and you're in. That's what it means. Paul said it's one more step. Wow. That's 2,000 years ago. Now, some would say, well, see, nothing's changed. Well, a lot of things have changed. We've gone from Paul saying he's right outside the door to a robot becoming a citizen. Are you kidding? What do you mean nothing has changed? We fly all over the place. God says in the last days, knowledge shall be increased. Is knowledge increased? All you got to do is go on the Internet. You can find anything, anything, nothing you can't find except the truth, of course. Uh, but even that's on the Internet still. You know, there's still biblical stuff on there. There's a gadget called, it has a female name. I don't remember the name. A family member has this. And all you got to do is speak to it, and it calls up everything. What is it? Serious? Yeah, maybe that is serious. Yeah, I think that's what it is. What? I suppose so. But the same concept. Right. It's got everything in it. One family member wanted something from the old country and said, look me up this particular song from so-and-so. Just like that. It wasn't even like the way, you know, and finally I'm looking. Bang, it was on. Wow. My nephew comes home and says, and, and gets greeted, hello, welcome home. And he says, hello. Is it evil? Not by itself. But you understand, it's part of the chain. It's a link in the chain. Just like radio, TV, telegraph, everything that preceded was a link in the chain. None of it evil by in, in and of itself, but it, it helped to get the system to where we are today. You understand, right? Okay. Otherwise, I couldn't drive a car. I'd be a hypocrite. I thought a car was evil, which people did. The Dunker community, for the longest time, thought cars were evil, and they wouldn't have it. They, and some still do the horse and buggy thing. That's why they do that. Nothing wrong with a car. A car is a car is a car. Technology goes on. But what it's used for, that's the point. Are you with me or are you sleeping? A couple of you are sleeping. The rest must be sleeping. So... Uh, be kind, be anxious for nothing. Verse 6, listen to this. He says, he first told us earlier, I press on, verse 14. I let that which is behind me, behind me. I go on, I forget about it. I learn from it, but I forget about it. Now he says, be anxious for nothing, verse 6, chapter 4. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, thank the Lord, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is one of the famous scriptures that you see on t-shirts, as well as chapter or verse 13 and verse 19, which we get to in a little bit. And then finally, my brethren, verse 8, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, whatever things are of a virtue, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. See, when we think we're, how we got screwed in the past and how we got hurt and how this, that, and the other, we're not going to think of any of these. We can't. We're going to think of that. Me, 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 me. I want a payback. I deserve a payback. That's what we think. I'm no different. I got to watch it. I got to put it down. I got to, it exalts itself above this in my head. And God says anything that exalts itself, lifts itself up above this, the Word of God, put it down, get rid of it immediately. And sometimes I allow it to be played a little longer than I should, and then i got to repent even more. Are you hearing me? Verse 9, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You know, that doesn't mean he was perfect. He was nowhere near Jesus. He said that the things he wants to do, he doesn't do. And the things he don't want to do, he does do. So he had his problems like you and I. He said, ah, who sets me free? Jesus. So in as much as he followed Jesus, you follow Paul. In as much as I follow Jesus, you follow me. But only in as much as I follow Jesus. And you, reckon, you understand. So how would you know? You wouldn't know unless you knew what Jesus is, who Jesus is, what his character is, what he wants. You know, the bracelets, what would Jesus do? You know, what would Jesus do? And all this, they had all was famous here 10, 12 years ago. What would Jesus do? 
I understand the reasoning behind that, but that's silliness. Give somebody a Bible. To wear a bracelet, what would Jesus do, does nothing. To cut your hair in a certain way and wear a certain garb and put scriptures on a wall does nothing for your holiness. Believing and doing your belief, works without faith is dead. I mean, faith without works is dead. Actually, works without faith is dead, too, because that's how the Old Testament got saved. They did a bunch of works, put the thing on the altar, killed an animal, and then were sorry they had to give their best because they really would have wanted to give the piece of trash over here with all these sicknesses. They want to give that to God. But no, they had to give the good one, so they gave the good one begrudgingly. Had no faith. No wonder they weren't saved. The law can't save you. But those few that said, here, God, here's my best. Forgive me of my sins. Back then before the cross were God's real people because they had faith in their along with that sacrifice, you understand. And we got to have sacrifices along with our faith. Faith now rules the day. The law ruled the day back then. Faith now rules the day. It doesn't replace the law. It just rules the day. Jesus said, I didn't come away to do away with it, but to fulfill it. Wow. And I said it a million times. I'll say it again. Remember, the original sin was not forgiven. This blows most people's minds who call themselves Christians. They don't even know what that means. I blew somebody's mind yesterday that called themselves Christians just by something I said about you know the satanic system they live under. They're like, <laughs> crazy. How do you go to church for years, decades, and don't know a little bit like that? How do you do that? Because you're not into this. That's how. You learn what somebody says up there, and you just kind of let that go. See you later. Go, go do my profession, my job, whatever. No, no, no. You get in the Word. Every one of you get in the Word and stay there. I don't care if it's a chapter or if it's two sentences or if it's a, a, you know, whatever. But get in there and spend some time with Christ himself because this is the Yeshua Logos, the written word. Stay with him. And if things don't get better, stay with him all the more. Because you're not going to him or staying with him for things to get better. You're staying with him to get saved and stay there. <laughs> Woo! couple more things I'm just getting started if I had a guitar I'd play it so God of peace will be with you I have peace with God even though I see trouble uh, some of you guys that have issues and so forth I don't see an answer an immediate one especially but I still have peace and I'm praying that you all have that peace and that you all continue to pray because it doesn't really matter what happens to us. It matters what we do about it. Let the past be past at last. Let's look forward. But a bing, but a bang. Ten. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you care for me has flourished again. Or your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care. So you cared in the past, but it was sort of waned. But now it's flourished again. But you lacked opportunity. That's why it waned. You couldn't do it. I was in jail. You were somewhere else. You couldn't do it. Verse 11, now that I speak in regard to need, or not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Wow. Are you content when you're hurting? Are you content when you're feeling good? Or is it only when you're feeling good? If that's the only time you're content, then you didn't get it. You've got to be content when you're hurting. Why? Because this is the truth. And we're going beyond the hurt. We're going beyond the feel good. We're going beyond all of that, see? I'm looking towards heaven. I really am. Of course, I'm Danny and I, and I guess and Thelma, uh, Thelma is the closest. And yet, it could be any one of you, one of these little ones, today. Wow. So I don't speak in regards to need. I learn to be content. I know how to be a base twelve, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then we have one of the famous scriptures, a lot of t-shirts, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, that's the result of the first few verses he said here. I learned how to be in need and I learned how to deal with it. I just trust God. I do what I can to get out of the situation. Who wants to be hungry? Who wants to be in need? Who wants to be cold? Who wants to be in trouble? Who wants to be in danger? Nobody. So I do what I can to alleviate those things, but the whole time I trust God. Nevertheless, 14, you have done well that you shared in my distress. The Philippian church, the local Philippian church, the one he's writing to, shared in his distress. How? Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church 
No local body of believers shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and, uh, once and again for my necessities. They took care of Paul when the Thessalonians should have done it. That church didn't take care of Paul, but the, the, the Philippians did. Or at least they didn't do enough. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruits that are bound to your account. Do you know you have an account in heaven? You do. If you're saved, if you're not saved, there is no account. I have an account in heaven and I want it to grow. I want to be wealthy in heaven. Now just to get there is wealth, do you understand? Paul tells the, the church of uh, Smyrna, the, the bad church, the persecuted church in the book of uh, uh, Revelation. I know you're poor, one of the churches. I know you're poor, but really you're rich. Wow. You get nothing here. You don't have a Joel Osteen, thousands and thousands of millions of dollars coming in every week. Every week, do you understand? But they're not, they're not rich at all. In fact, they're dying, they're dead. They're poor, it's a dead place because they teach trash. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared my distress. For even doesn't like that I now, verse 17, now that I seek the, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruits that are bound to your account. 18, indeed, to have all in abound, I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. That sweet-smelling aroma is language barred from the Old Testament, where when, when they did an animal and the smoke went up and they did it right with the right faith behind it and praising God and thanking Him, God, oh, that smells good to me. Not that He likes a smelling animal, but you understand... It was your faith that, that smells good to me, God says, when this thing comes up in such a manner. And so Paul is using Old Testament language here. He says, to me, Paul, when you guys helped me, when you sent your offering, when you sent the extra clothing, when you sent the extra parchments and the ink and the stuff that I needed, he said, that was wonderful. It was like a sweet aroma to me. And I know you had to sacrifice because you had to make a collection or somebody had to go buy it and somebody had to go wrap it up and carry it all the way to me. And it cost you to do that. It cost you time. It cost you money. It cost you your health, your, 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 your energy, your strength. But that's what the sacrifice, that was sweet to me. Thank you. That's what we're talking about, ladies and girls. And then 19, the other famous scripture. Let three or four come straight out of Philippians. And my God shall supply all your need, not your wants, all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How rich is God? Well, yeah, he's like, there's nobody richer. God owns it all. <clears throat> God says every soul is mine. In, in the Psalms, I believe. Even the lost ones. All souls are mine. It's not the same as we're his children. Please understand that. Say, oh, oh, God, no, we're not. Because John 1, 14 says we're not all children of God. Jesus told the Pharisees, you're of your devil. The, your, your father is a devil. You're the children of the devil. So we're not all his children. We're all his creation, but we're not all his children. But every soul still belongs to God. Jesus said, don't fear him who can kill you, who can kill your body. Fear him who can not only do that, but consign you to the lake of fire. Fear him. And my God shall supply all your need. Is he your God? He's my God. He's not the Jehovah God, or he's not the Jehovah's Witness God. He's not the Mormon God. He's not many Baptist God. He's not Roman Catholic God. He's not the Muslim God. He's not the New Age of God. He's only the God of those who are true Christians. That's whose God he is. 20, now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Remember, amen means so be it in its finality. It doesn't just mean, you know, whatever. Be very careful what you amen to. It means so be it in its finality. Nothing more is going to be said about it. It's over. Something to ponder, huh? Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. Notice it doesn't say greet everyone in Christ Jesus. How could you? Those who don't know Christ, why would you greet them in Christ? Greet every saint, every believer, every born-again believer in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you. 
but especially those who are of Caesar's household. That's his palace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. This was the Praetorium. You remember, if you, did you guys see the movie uh, Gladiator with uh, Russell Crowe? And when they're about to whack him because, you know, the, the son you know, took over as, as uh, Caesar and his royal guard was a Praetorian. So that's why he did, he did the one, the one sitting on the horse taking a drink. And uh, the character in the movie yelled, Praetorian! And he comes and they have a fight, you know, and then he takes off. That's because he was a Praetorian guard. This is where Paul was. Paul was in the Praetorium. In the guard, in the palace guard, Caesar's personal bodyguard. And he got converts from there. We read it earlier. Forget where it is now, but he got converts from there. Where is that? Anyway, I'll I'll forget now. But anyway. All I know is sometimes, you know, I wish I'd have said something different or said it differently or or I get advised, maybe you should have done this or that or whatever. All I know is what comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth up here. And in as much I'm in the service of the Lord up here, I figure it's Him for somebody. It may not be for you on my left, but it may be for you on my right. It may not be for you on my right. It may be for you on my left. It may be for just one of you. It may be for all of you at the same time. It'll never not be for anyone. It's for somebody, whoever shows up. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much. We do thank you, Lord, and we offer our our gift of praise. This is why it's so important to come and sing your words, your glorious words, and, and the glorious deeds you performed and did for us, and, and that you sent your Son, who became flesh and died on the cross, and rose again, hallelujah, from the grave. For you are the God of the living. You're not the God of the dead. You're the God of the living, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Help us to obey you more and more to make that love more in value. Can't be more in volume, but more in value. The quality. Help us in the quality of our individual faiths. Forgive us our sins, Lord. Be with Pastor Eric and all the persecuted church. Be with the remnant of Israel, especially the peace of Jerusalem, Lord. And come, Lord, come and get us. You're at hand. You were at hand when Paul wrote it, because that is the truth. It's just that in time, a a thousand years or an hour means nothing to you, because time is always now. Rather, eternity is always now, and we're living in time that seems like a stretched out thing, and for us, it's like, when is it going to happen? But it's already over in eternity. You've already accomplished it. Let us live it, Lord. Let us, let us live it in time. Again, forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.